Hello, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to use VMware Workstation Player, which is a free software to create a virtual machine for an OS within Windows. For example, you could do it for Linux, the Ubuntu distro if you want it. You could do it for another version of Windows. Maybe you're trying to do something you know, self-contained, maybe for security purposes, or just, just trying out a beta version or a newer version or an older version, whatever it is. You can do this with VMware Workstation Player, and it works, you know, pretty darn well considering it's free. So, first of all, you want to go ahead and download VMware Workstation Player. Obviously, as you are, you know, creating a virtual machine, it is recommended that you have a pretty powerful PC because it's using part of your PC's resources. So if your PC is already struggling, then it's, already, it's not the best idea. Just click download for free. It will, you know, start downloading. Uh, my internet is running really slow because I'm uploading a previous YouTube video that I've just created. Okay, select the latest version, click, you know, Go to downloads, for example, to go there. Uh, and here we go. Just download the latest version for Windows, click that, we'll be all good to go. So I'm going to close that. The other thing that you can get hold of is I'll be using Ubuntu, but you could use something else. So just go to ubuntu.com if you want to install that and just download it from here. Just click download. You can either do the long term support or the latest stable release. And if you like, if you want Windows 11, type in Windows 11 download, it takes you to the official website. You can download an ISO. Obviously, you'll need a key to activate it at a later date, but just for, for quick testing, you know, it's great just to be able to, you know, download it. So just scroll down, go to the ISO, click download. First of all, you select which version, click download. And then you select the product language. I would do English International, for example. Click Confirm. And then you just click 64-bit download. It starts downloading. So I'm going to cancel it because I've already got it. Plus, I'm going to be doing Ubuntu in this video anyway. And so open up VMware Player, EXE. First of all, we'll install VMware Player. Click yes on the UAC. Remember when they first introduced user account control in Windows Vista. Thumbs up if you remember that and comment down below your memories of Windows Vista. Okay, so next. And I'm just going to go to change. Obviously, you won't have this. I've already got it installed. So here's a very important. You can leave this as is. The enhanced keyboard driver, you can choose to install it. You will need to reboot it to use it, but I'm not that fussed about it. But so what is the enhanced keyboard driver? There's a few things. If you use, let's say, Control, Alt, and Delete, or Windows are now to lock on your keyboard, let's say, on a Windows, or even some, let's say, maybe Linux distros might have those, you know, hotkeys, those macros, I should say, then you'll want the enhanced keyboard driver. The enhanced keyboard driver also adds extra you know support for lang keyboard languages international languages so if you're doing anything other than english you know it's worth having that as well again it just requires a reboot click next and at this point you'll be able to install it i'm going to click cancel because i've already got it once you've installed it open up the player and now create a new virtual machine from here you can install it from a disk maybe you can, you know, just create the virtual machine for now, but I'm going to install it from the disk image file. It's already picked it up. Otherwise, you click browse and you choose where. And because the operating system has been detected, it knows what to do. You will use easy install, which just makes things a lot faster and easier. Click next. Now, personalize the name. I'm going to put Farhan Hussein and my username. I'll put as Farhan. And password, I'm going to simply put a password. The most secure password in the world. Click next. Uh, 
Uh, remind me later, I'll download the newer version after. Click next, that's fine. You can choose where to store it. I'm gonna store it in the default directory and feel free to name your virtual machine as well. I'll leave it as is. And now you can choose the max, the size that you want for your hard drive. This will allow you to use this amount of space on your hard drive. So if you don't have more space, don't give it a crazy amount. 20 gig will be enough just to get it loaded and do a few things, so I'll leave it as that. And you have the option to split virtual disk into multiple files. Benefit of that is moving it to different computers is a lot easier moving those small files instead of trying to move a large 50 gig file or a large 20 gig file, but it can reduce performance with very large disks. So I generally just prefer to use a single file. And at this point, before we continue, you can go to customize hardware and you can increase the amount of RAM that you want to allocate. Again, this is going to be using your you know actual you know ram as well so you don't want to use you know put too much because obviously if you have what's it called a pretty low-end computer let's say if you have eight gig of ram you start doing uh six gig you're not leaving much for the host os which is the os that you have currently right now and any I mean, that's it really. Obviously, you don't want to go beyond what your amount is because I've got 32 gig of RAM, so you say the maximum is 27.9. Anything extra, I think you'll just create it as, you know, a virtual memory on your hard drive. Now, in processors, you can increase the number of cores. Again, two to four is probably fine, but it depends on what, you know, CPU you've got. If you've got like a Ryzen processor that has 16 cores, allocating four or six cores is no biggie. If you've got a four core processor and you're trying to allocate four, you're gonna have issues. So I've got six cores, so I'm just gonna allocate two. And if you need any of these, you know, CPU engines, feel free to virtualize it. And for the CD, you can leave that as is. And the network adapter, leave it as is, because that by default will connect to your current network adapter in your computer, which will mean you'll get internet and network functionality. And in terms of USB compatibility, you can filter it to 1.1, 2.0, or 3.0. And you can show all the USB input devices if you want to. A lot of this data can be changed afterwards as well. So I'm gonna leave it as this sound card, because I don't really need to mess around with. And you know, you can enable this afterwards so you can actually use the printer. And I'm just gonna use the host setting. And for graphics memory, I, again, most of the time, I recommend leaving it as is. Click close. Click finish your power on the virtual machine now. So just gonna wait for this to install. If at any point it asks us to do something, we'll you know interact with VMware, but otherwise we'll just leave it and I'll just fast forward. Okay, so we can, you know, whilst it's installing, we can do some configuration. Do you like this about Ubuntu? It's, it, Linux has had this for a long time. So I'm going to select my keyboard layout and just regular UK. Click, you know, you can test the keyboard right here if you want to. Click continue. And do normal or minimal installation. Normal will have some extra piece of software. If you really want it bare bones, go on minimal, which is, you know, what I'll do just to keep things fast and simple. And you can download updates while installing Ubuntu. It just makes things easier right now. But again, I'm going to deselect that. And you can install third party software for graphics and Wi Fi hardware and additional media formats. I recommend doing that. The reason I'm deselecting the update part, I recommend you do that is because I'm uploading something right now. My internet's super slow and it'll just take a long time otherwise i'm gonna just have this configuration otherwise i would recommend downloading updates okay so it's just asking for installation type recommend you just leave this as is you want to erase this this will not erase your let's say your host os so my windows os for example you'll only just erase this a little virtual drive that I've created, some advanced features as well. Again, if you know what you're doing here, feel free to select these. And otherwise you can click something else. This will allow you to create part, multiple partitions. If you know what you're doing, maybe you want to create different partitions to store different data, feel free to do that. 
click install now. And that's fine, just leave it out there, click continue. So here we can just, you know, just ask him where we are, London, that's fine, click continue. And we can create some properties for settings. Like for some reason, it doesn't carry it over, even though we had already set some data before. That's fine. So I'm going to put Farhan. It just gets the first name for the computer name. That's fine. You can obviously modify it if you want to. Password. I'm going to put my super secure password of password. And you can do login automatically as well, or require my password on login. I do login automatically. You can use Active Directory if you want to. Otherwise, just leave it. But we don't need that. Oh, just realized I had my mic on mute for a few seconds. So I was just saying, I ended up canceling my upload just because it's taking a while. So just asking me to restart. So I'll just click restart. It's not actually restarting the host OS, so my Windows. It's just restarting the virtual machine, which, which is fine. Doesn't really matter. So we're just waiting for this to reboot now. Okay, so that is it. It's installed now. And I uh, can click skip on that. Let's say, yep, that's fine. Click continue. I'm going to close this down here. And don't send info. Do, 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 do. Nah, don't want to enable location services. And click done. Okay, that's it. And obviously, what's really cool about it is if I resize, resizes it really well and you know obviously it's not going to work as well as if you was to install it directly onto the hardware instead of a virtual machine but honestly it works pretty darn well especially when you're just doing some testing maybe development again obviously it depends on the sort of computer you have if you have a powerful computer it does help you know you can use the features of ubuntu and like i said it works really well one thing i just want to show you is if let's say your guest OS has effectively captured your your mouse where you can't get it out of the window, that's fine. Just press Control and Alt, and as you can see, it's now put mine into my regular Windows cursor, and I can click to go back on there. That's only if it just sort of captures it. And remind me later. I don't need this right now. I'm going to close that down. Obviously, normal Ubuntu settings. Here you can go and click shut down. Guess this will effectively shut it down as if you're powering down your computer. Suspend, it is a great thing. You can just effectively pause it, come back, and you'll just start where you left off. This is probably what a lot of the time people do, like a sleep mode. And you can restart it again, just like restarting your computer. And just, obviously, that's just putting a control or delete to the virtual machine. If you didn't have those enhanced driver keys enabled, you can go to full screen mode as well. And in file, you can go to preferences. And there's a, again, a bunch of preferences. Some of them we had already you know, looked at. Feel free to download all the components for you know, the best experience possible. And you can change the settings here for you know printers, USBs, that sort of stuff. And other than that, obviously you can modify the virtual machine settings, which we had already set. So feel free to come back here and set it or change them and removable devices obviously because i didn't enable the usb stuff so none of the usb devices are connected but you can connect them up in virtual machine settings go to usb controller show all usb inputs you'll have to turn the virtual machine off shut it down and put it back on to be able to enable that and that's it so i'm just going to do this yeah i'll suspend it And it's a saving, saving state. I love save states. Save states are one of my favorite things in the world, especially when it comes to stuff on computers. Obviously, it's taking a bit of time because, again, it's saving this state so we can literally directly open it and it will go back to this 
particular state and there'll be no difference whatsoever. Okay, so we're almost done. We're at what, 87% now, 88, 89, 90. The last 10% zipped up, zipped really fast, and that's it. And obviously, if you want to launch up your virtual machine again, it's really simple. Launch it up, just click this. You can double click it, and you can, or you can click the play button as well. You can power it off if it was in suspend mode, and you can edit the virtual machine settings right here as well. And obviously, I can't edit a lot of these because it, I'm in suspend mode. You need to shut it down to be able to edit them because you can think of it like a real machine if you're kind of adding hardware i guess you would need to shut it down ideally otherwise you'll run into problems so that's it if you have any questions feel free to post on the discord group link in the description if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button let me know if you want to see more of these sort of you know virtual machines setting up ubuntu windows videos and i'll create more content and i'll see you soon bye bye